Succession gardening is one of the most powerful tools in a backyard gardener's arsenal. Often misunderstood and even more often misapplied, crop succession planting is an untapped productivity powerhouse for space challenge backyard gardeners. So let's look at how you can begin succession planting today and transform your grow spaces into yielding utopias. So what is succession gardening? Succession gardening, often confused with companion planting, is when the next crop in line is planted while the first crop is still growing. That is, before it's harvested. So two crops coexisting for a brief period. This works because the two plants at their opposing stages of life are either complementary to each other or they can simply tolerate one another. Our plan today is to take a few varieties of indeterminate tomatoes that we've been itching to get into the garden and plant them right alongside our sugar snap peas that we seeded in the early spring. Conventional planting would have us wait until we harvested those peas before we could get these vine tomatoes into the garden. But by planting these tomatoes now, we can get a jump start on the growing season and possibly be anywhere from four to eight weeks ahead of schedule. In terms of your garden's productivity and yield, I don't have to tell you that that could potentially be huge. While the theory of succession gardening can be quite complex, the actual practice of it is fairly straightforward. Your first step in succeeding a crop with another starts with choosing the right crops at the right time of year. This strategy doesn't work for all plants, and for those that it does work with, may only have a specific window where it's even possible. My favorite way to succession garden is to mix a fast crop with a slow one. That is, take a plant with a relatively quick seed to harvest window and succeed it with a complementary plant that takes much longer. The two perfect examples that have worked for me time and time again are peas and tomatoes. Particularly successful are vine varieties. Now, the other factor that works in our favor is the weather that these crops prefer. With peas enjoying the cooler weather of spring and tomatoes absolutely needing the heat of summer. Ignoring the general rules of crop spacing, I'm able to plant right alongside my mature pea vines with several varieties of indeterminate tomatoes. However, when I planted the pea seeds in the spring, I purposely left a gap between each grouping of peas. I did this knowing that I would be succeeding the bed with vine tomatoes early in the summer. Now, when planting your tomatoes, you still need to observe the rules of spacing as they will be growing right through the summer and will be exponentially larger than they are right now. You can see here that I'm actually digging my tomato vines right into the ground. There is two methods for planting indeterminate tomatoes. I'll throw a link in the description below to another video that I did recently that really showcases the two strategies. Either method that you choose, get those vines as deep as possible, even if you bury half the stem. Don't worry about it, tomatoes love to be planted this way. Hopefully as we work through the bed, you can begin to see the idea behind succession gardening. Those pea vines are about to explode with flowers and pea pods in the next few weeks. The tomatoes, while growing great in the pots, are clearly being held back at this point. They need to be planted up. Neither plant is going to be adversely affected by the new planting arrangement. So while the peas are entering their harvest stage, the tomatoes can begin their extreme vegetative stage at the same time. Had we waited until the peas were done and harvested, the tomatoes would have lost a month to maybe even six weeks of advanced growth. 
This is what makes succession planting so powerful. If one crop planted right after another one is considered zero downtime, then succession planting would have to actually be negative downtime. In terms of productivity, that's gold, Jerry. That's gold. To finish up the planting, I'm going to tie off the vines to the wire trellis and then replace some of that mulch as I've disturbed the soil. I'm not a huge fan of digging holes in my garden and disturbing the soil, but I don't have a batch of potting mix ready for this video, so digging the vines down in a hole was really the only option. Today, I'm simply using coarse straw for my mulch. It really works great and is what I'd consider an all season mulch. Once the beds are fully mulched and back in order after the disturbance, I go ahead and give the tomatoes a really good soaking to solidify the planting. As you can see, remulching that bed really helps to protect that top layer of soil. It's already paying dividends. Succession planting can be an odd concept and an even odder practice to get your head around. With all manners of plant spacing and crop uniformity going out the window. But what the beds lack in aesthetic appeal, they more than make up for in actual productivity. And in terms of food security and self-sustainability, isn't that what it's all about? As we look over the finished bed, I'd also like to point out that at the end of summer, we can easily do the reverse of this planting. As the tomato vines are being harvested in the waning dog days of summer, there's no reason we can't go in and replant yet another crop of peas ready to take over and bring us into the fall. Awesome stuff. Succession planting is no different than regular planting other than timing. Using the knowledge of a plant's life cycle and how it grows during its different stages can be a huge advantage to succession gardening. Getting plants into the ground weeks or even months ahead of schedule has profound effects on yield and productivity. And in space challenge gardens, growing with a finite amount of summer days, this can make all the difference in the world. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind and I'll see you in the next video.